Hello, my name's Katie and welcome to this Mend With Me video. And also welcome to my hobby room slash art studio. And because my sewing machine is away being serviced at the moment, this is going to be a no sew or at least no machine sew video. And if my phone battery doesn't die, we might even get some different angles today. So let's get into it. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to mend today is this t-shirt, which uh, if you've seen my previous video you may recognise it. It's just a t-shirt that I wear at home, but I did notice a couple of holes in it uh, when I was making the video last time, uh, so I'd like to fix those. Hmm, there's a bunch of holes in this actually. I actually watched a tutorial to find out how to mend holes in stretch fabric. Any videos or other sources that I mention in this video I'll link in the description box. But the tutorial I found was for very small holes, which is... These are small, but they're also laddered, so I might need to take a slightly different tack. Mm, let's get the iron out. I do have an ironing board, but for small jobs like this, I usually just use a folded towel because it's easier than getting the ironing board out of the cupboard. Now, I know I've raved on before in mending videos about uh, this double-sided fusible interfacing, so I decided to buy some in bulk because I'm sure I'll use a lot of it. If I can remember where I bought it from, I'll link it below. Uh, this looks like the biggest one, so let's start with that one. What I'm going to do is put a piece of baking paper underneath. Um, I think they call it other things in different countries, but it, it's non-stick paper. So I'll put that underneath so nothing sticks. Now, according to the tutorial, you press it flat first. I don't know why. This may be an unnecessary step, I'm not sure. Then you kind of use your fingertips to pinch the edges together. But I think because this is a slightly bigger hole, that might not work. Uh, so we'll just have to see how we go. No, I don't think that's going to work. All right, let's abandon that idea. Now, I'll get a piece of the fusible interfacing and cut it to size. Uh, that looks pretty good. Now because when I iron the interfacing it'll be sticky on both sides, I need to put something over the top of it so that it won't get all gunky and stuck to the iron and ruin it permanently. The tutorial suggested what looked like some kind of non-sticky interfacing, which I don't really have. But I do have these dried out baby wipes, which I was saving for some kind of art project. But um, I've washed one and dried it, and it seems to be a very similar kind of texture to interfacing, so hopefully it'll work. So what I'm going to do is cut, as you can see, choppy choppy. Uh, maybe I should use the fabric scissors. And you want to make sure that the um, non-sticky interfacing is at least the same size as the sticky one or bigger. Because if any of the sticky one sticks out, <laughs> then um, it'll get all gunky and, and ruin your iron. Just lay that over the hole. And then you press with your iron. Uh, there, and just press and press and press and press and press. Even if you don't use an interfacing as your backing fabric, you want to use something that's really nice and soft. So it feels nice when you wear the whatever the garment is. I think that's all right. Now, I'm just going to skip ahead through the magic of YouTube and do the rest of these holes off camera because I think you get the gist. A few inches later. So here's the finished mended t-shirt. Uh, I did find several holes. Also a few spots that are starting to wear a little bit. I guess I'll deal with those if and when they crop up. Now, the only thing about this is um, it does leave some visible white kind of dots on the front which mm, it's okay but I think probably in the future I'm going to do some more work on this t-shirt and maybe upcycle it maybe even turn these kind of dot ladder things into a, a design feature if the t-shirt lasts that long that is so that's job number one done job number two is this scrunchie the elastic's all gone in it and you know it's just a really cheap little scrunchie that I got from Daiso but I mean it's pretty cute with the pom-poms on it so I want to be able to use it again in the future so I found some elastic that I had from a pair of shoes I bought uh, and I thought that would be great for fixing it. It's hat elastic I believe is what it's called but it's quite thin elastic so I might see if I have um, enough length to double it. it should be fine I imagine. Now, what would the diameter of this scrunchie be if the elastic wasn't stretched out? Probably a bit smaller than that. I'm, I'm not going to a plan here I'm just making this up as I go along so I think it would be just enough. Let me undo this knot. Oh, excuse my sliced up thumb. I didn't have time to wait until my thumb healed up before filming the video, so you just have to put up with my band-aid. And you know, I know that my hair isn't dyed and I'm not wearing lots of makeup and I'm just wearing a casual clothes, but I figure I'm amongst friends, right? We're just doing some mending together. There's no need to, you know, get all fancy. It's just a cash time. I've got my cup of tea here, although I think it's a bit cold, but we're just hanging out. All right, so I think if, I do if and when I double this up, it'll be the perfect length. This is the original elastic, and I can see the pom-poms are kind of twisted around it in a complicated way, or probably not complicated, but too hard for me to figure out. 
Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread the new elastic through and follow the path of the old elastic and then take out the old elastic. So what I'm gonna do is thread the elastic through. So I'm following the path of the, this is gonna take a while. Just gotta make sure that I don't pull it through the opposite end because that would defeat all my good work. I'm sure you can tell I'm making this up as I go along. I, I, no, I, I don't know what I'm doing. 2,000 years later. Okay, there we go. I've got the um, elastic all threaded through and there's actually a bit more than I needed, I think, actually. So I can decide how scrunched up I want the scrunchie to be. Well, you want it to go around your wrist, of course. So I'm just going to tie a knot in there. Make sure it's a nice tight knot. That seems pretty good. And I'll just trim off the ends carefully. And last step is to take out the old elastic. So here goes. I'm going to cut it. I might have to cut it in a couple of spots. It's probably attached, like, on the inside somewhere. There we are. Old elastic gone. And my scrunchie is now back in business. Woohoo. So that's project number two. Done. Okay. Project number three is this beanie, uh, which I purchased from a chain store uh, quite a long time ago. And after only one wear, I saw that it was starting to come apart. There was this here, and you can see threads coming through here, and, and it's coming apart at the back as well. And uh, so I just didn't wear it again because I didn't want to ruin it. <laughs> And put it in the mending pile um and here we are like five years later so let's uh let's fix it now, i think i'll need a few different techniques to um deal with this because it is knitted so i'm just going to trim off this thread first okay i'll turn it inside out and see what it looks like on the inside i think it's just poorly constructed to be honest well i'm gonna take the tag off because it's annoying okay thank goodness for quick unpickers i've got to say Okay, so what we've got here is some structural issues. Well, everywhere, really. If I had some fabric glue, I might try and glue that, but it's a stretchy fabric, so I'm not sure if that would work. Is that... Oh, look, there's a big hole in the back here, too. This is very po poorly constructed, I have to say. I mean, I'm sure it was made in an unsustainable place, so, you know, this is what happens when you buy cheap, so... Uh, okay, but I'm going to fix it and mend it and continue to use it. I might do the back seam first because I think that'll be the easiest. So I do have some cream coloured thread that I just had hanging around. Hopefully I can use this. So don't mind me while I take ages to thread this needle. One eternity later. Oh, you may ask yourself, why don't you use a needle threader? I have a needle threader, but it's with my sewing machine, which is currently on a three week spa holiday at the sewing machine repairman's house. So, uh, yeah. Uh, no, because this is um, quite a loose fabric. It's not even a fabric, it's like a knit. I'm putting some extra knots in the thread because it might pull through more easily. I'm going to do a, what's this called, a back stitch, I think. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my voice the last few days. I've had a bit of a croaky voice. I'm not sick, I just don't know. It's been very cold here, maybe that's why. It's winter here, by the way. We're in Australia, so it's winter right now. Hello to everyone who's having summer right now. Okay, I think that's the whole... The whole of the hole has been fixed. I like to do two knots. People vary, but I like to do two because that's how I was taught. Some people only do one. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, just doing the end here. Am I still doing backstitch? I don't know. I'm just doing like getting uh, the needle caught in my band-aid stitch. I probably could have done a whip stitch, but that's an option as well. I don't know which is better in this situation. I'm no Bernadette Banner, okay? All right. But I think I would like to ask for her book for Christmas. And now I'm just like not even looking as I'm sticking the needle in, you know, that's that's the level of professionalism we have going on here. See, there's this loop of wool here that's kind of loose. I think I'm going to try and catch that in the in the thread so that it's not like dangling all over the place. It's just something about hand sewing that, you know, makes me think about all the people from the last hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years who did exactly the same thing. So I might tackle the most, the hardest one next. So we've got here, um, it's actually started unraveling. So what I'm gonna do, get my trusty crochet hook and I'm gonna re-knit this thing. So uh, if even if you don't crochet, I highly recommend getting a crochet hook because you can use them for so many different things. Like you can use them for fixing your knitting, from retrieving threads from all over the place where you may have lost them. They're really, really handy. So we've got another th problem going on here. We've got some loose threads here and there's a bit of a hole here. 
what on earth happened to this? So I've got to secure off this loop, tie down these um, loose threads and fill in the gap all at the same time. I can do that. So I need to get this loop through to the back without it uh, unraveling. I'm going to take this piece of spare red thread and I'm going to thread that through. So then I've got like a nice long loop to deal with. I, I don't know how this is done. If anyone's ever done this before, I'm just making this up as I go along. So hopefully it works. So now I'm going to get the crochet hook and put it through the gap, hook onto the longer piece of the thread, pull that through. So it's all come through now towards the back. And the red thread is holding it in place so it won't unravel. And I want to get all the loose threads pointing in towards the back so I can like encapsulate them and make it look nice and neat. Look at that, would you? Honestly. On this one, I might do a whip stitch, maybe. So what I'm doing is just inching the knitted fabric up a tiny bit to close that gap to make sure it's firmly attached so that a new gap won't open up. That's what I'm trying to say. Definitely not going to have enough thread for this, so I totally misjudged that. So I'm just going to pause and re-thread and that, okay? Da 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 cha cha nicka cha 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 That's a knot. Oh, that's a knot. Just, but it is a knot. Okay, I'm back with a longer piece of thread, so hopefully this will happen now. And I'm going to do a whip stitch on this because I feel like it just feels more appropriate. I don't know. I hope that's not making a hole. Let me just check the other side really quick. Oh yeah, no, the hole's closing. Excellent. All right, we're nearly to the end of the, the hole, the gap, whatever you want to call it. We now have the loop uh, that had been unraveling and is now um, entrapped within this red piece of thread. Not entrapped. No, it's, it's nicer than that. I've accidentally sewn the red thread. Okay, no, don't panic, don't panic. We'll just chop this little bit here. Don't panic, don't panic. All right, so we're coming to the far end of the hole where this loop is that was unraveling, which is now currently being held by the red thread. So what I want to do is make sure that I really firmly, you know, lock that down so that it won't unravel again. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I might actually thread the thread through this loop and that'll definitely make it secure. The red wool is free and I'm just going to put a few more stitches through just to be safe. Oh, and in case you're wondering what I'm actually filming on, uh, it's just my iPad. It's not a fancy camera or anything, so you don't need a fancy camera to make YouTube videos. All right, so I've turned it back uh, right way out and you can't even see where that issue was now. So I'm very pleased with that. This this hat is becoming much more of a um, project than I'd planned. Uh, but you know, that sometimes happens with sewing. Uh, okay, so I've finished doing everything I want to do to the hat. So let's do a try on. How cute is it? How are you supposed to wear it? Like, I guess like this. But you can't really see the face unless like you're a really tall person. Actually, I'm not sure I like this hat that much after all. <laughs> oh no, it is pretty cute. I just like, I thought the ears would be further forward so you could see properly what the go is. But it's nice and warm. All right, project number three done. One more project to go. Okay, so my last project for today is this pair of pants, uh, which I mm, have had for a while. I only wear them at home. Soon after I started wearing them, uh, these pills started appearing all over them, which are rather unsightly. Usually I don't worry about that sort of thing. So I'm going to do something I've never done before and uh, try shaving the pills or lint or whatever it's called off these pants. Now, and I'm doing that because I just happened to find in the cupboard yesterday this lint remover from Daiso, which um, I bought many years ago and, as you can see, have never even opened. Obviously, I'm not going to do the whole pair of pants because how boring would that be? But I'll give it a crack anyway. Oh, there's a lot of instructions. How to use. <laughs> All right, what's that thing? I don't know. Ugh, what's that tiny little ring thing? Weird. Oh, I think it might be a bead. Anyway, the ADHD brain in motion. Okay, so I guess you just turn it on. Wipe with an oil-soaked rag? What? There's talk of crushing? I don't know, this sounds rather... It may shoot out. Oh my gosh, this sounds kind of stressful. And it just tells you how to empty it, not actually how to use it. All right, well, um, these pants were really cheap, so if I stuff them up then... Oh well. Here we go. Is it supposed to do something? Oh, there we go. Oh, I think it's working. 
thing. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, it's like sharing a sheep. Which I've not done, but I've seen done. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is cool. To be honest, I didn't think it would work this well. Wow. And let's see. Oh, look, there's a little ball of fluff in there. Oh, how exciting. Look at it going round and round. I could probably do this all afternoon, you know, but I won't subject you to it. It's okay. Yeah. That's cool. Unintended review. Uh, Daiso lint remover. Pretty cool. So I'll probably do the rest of these pants at some point later. And awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful and or fun and or entertaining. Um, remember, I think you're amazing and I hope you have a great day or evening and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Where's the camera? Oh, that side. You're right there. You're right there. I can see you there. Oh, oh look, there's a ray of sunlight coming down onto my head dried out baby wipes which I was saving for some, that's got hair on it oh. is that a plane I don't my camera doesn't have time for planes are you still going good no I'm just pulling it just pulling on it love which is a uh, shave the lint now the low power I'm plagued with low power today uh, is there an on-off button oh yes there is <laughs> doing well <laughs> Oh, that's not a good noise. I really want to stick something into it, but that's probably not advisable. I kind of look like, is it a badger? What is a badger? No, we, we don't have badgers here. If it was like a quokka, that would be cool. No, quokkas are too small to fit on your head. Okay, bye.